Hello and welcome back to Underlab. Before I say anything, make sure to check out the new Patreon perks by following the link below, as you can join my Discord and talk to me whenever you like. Today's theory was requested by Kay Jensen. As I'm sure most of you know, a lot of Undertale is in black and white. Typically it's whenever we're fighting a monster, though this isn't always the case. So what exactly is the reason for this? Was it really just laziness? Was it a stylistic choice? Or maybe it's something entirely different? It's time to investigate the reason behind why Undertale is black and white. In case the title confuses you, I specifically mean Undertale's various battles. In these, all colour disappears as we fight entirely white characters contrasted by a black background. The one true exception to this is the fight with Omega Flowey, who's in complete colour and appears to have been designed in Photoshop, unlike the other sprite-based monsters who were supposedly drawn in paint and graphic scale. What led Toby to this decision then? He was surely aware that it could have backfired and be a very unpopular choice. It's very rare these days to see a film or TV series in black and white, let alone a video game, though it does happen occasionally. Still, Undertale isn't truly black and white. There's plenty of colour when we proceed through the areas. For all we know, every monster really does become white whenever they're fighting. But why would this be? It's worth considering the possibility that it's purely a stylistic choice. It undeniably helps to make Undertale a little more memorable. As how often do you play games devoid of colour? I suppose it's also possible that Toby simply doesn't want to colour the monsters. Maybe he felt they looked better entirely white. But then, there's a completely different possibility that I think could explain everything a little better. Colours are incredibly important to Undertale's story. There's seven colours in particular that stand out, namely red, purple, blue, green, yellow, cyan and orange. These are the colours of the six souls of the humans who fell underground, as well as Chara or Kara's soul, along with Frisk's soul. They represent the traits we must show on the pacifist path in order to complete the game without killing anyone. As I've said in the past, monster souls may very well be white as they have to possess all the important traits, such as kindness and integrity, unlike humans, as the Snowden Library reveals. Could this also tie into why they are entirely white when we fight them. As Kay Jensen suggested, what if white is the colour of magic? This ties in quite an interesting way into many of the previous theories I've made. I've explored many reasons as to why humans in Undertale supposedly can't use magic. And if we think about it, if the colour white within Undertale represents some sort of manifestation of the seven key traits, it's no wonder why that humans can't use magic. The library explains that humans don't appear to require any of the noble characteristics that monsters do. And because of that, they may very well have been cut off at some point from the ability to use magic. Maybe it was right after they committed the terrible deed of trapping all of monster kind underneath Mount Ebert. The reason I say this is because of the human mage we see in the introduction of the game, and because the barrier is described as being magical, inferring that at one point in time, humans actually could use magic. It seems to be a force that only serves the inherently good, unlike determination, which seems to work better the more evil you are. So maybe the monsters are surrounded by some sort of magical aura when they fight you, which explains why they're seen as entirely white. After all, almost every monster seems to rely on magic to some extent extent to fight. However, there's a lot more to it. Another very interesting observation made by Kay Jensen is that many of the most powerful monsters within the game are white in the overworld as well. The Dreamer family who have ruled over monster kinds for centuries are all entirely white with the possible exception of their eyes and of course the clothes they wear. There's no denying that they're some of the most powerful monsters in the game, particularly considering their nature as boss monsters. The Dreamers are some of the only monsters whose soul does not disappear after death. Also, Asriel Jima becomes one of the most powerful characters in the game after absorbing thousands of monster souls and the six human souls. But of course, they aren't the only ones. On the genocide path, Sans reveals his true power. And once again, he's a character who is completely white in the overworld. Sure, he's a skeleton, so it's to be expected. But there does seem to be a trend here. Now, an obvious exception is Undyne the Undying, who has blue skin and red hair. However, there's an important distinction between her and the other characters. Undyne is one of the few monsters with probably just as much, if not more, physical ability than magical. Asgore might be pretty strong, but look at how much he uses fire magic against us. He uses both magic and physical strength to fight, whereas the only magical thing about Undyne is the fact that she summons her spears. Could this be why she's so powerful, but not white then? It doesn't seem impossible. What about Sans? If you think about it, he isn't a physical fighter like Undyne. He surely uses magic to throw all the bones he does at us, and his gaster blasters are probably charged with magical energy. He too then depends on magic to fight. Some of the most powerful creatures within Undertale are the Amalgamates. They aren't necessarily the hardest to defeat, but physically attacking them does nothing. In fact, that's a trend with a lot of the purely white characters within Undertale. Sans dodges your attacks and Azriel can't be hurt, for example. What's even more interesting about the Amalgamates is that their overworld sprites appear to be be coloured are like grey. 
We know that most monsters have skin and fur that's all sorts of various colours, as we can tell by their overworld sprites. But when fused together and forced to become amalgamates, why is it that they all become like grey? Could it be because so much latent magical energy has also become spliced together? It starts to make more and more sense when we remember that the monsters are mostly made of magic. They lack the physical bodies that humans have, as Alfie's explains. So is something revealed about the nature of magic when we keep in mind that beings made of this stuff appear to be like grey or white when their physical bodies completely give in? It seems to be supported the hypothesis that white is the colour of magic, but it doesn't end there. What about the fight with Azrael? It intentionally cycles through the spectrum of colours as the power equivalent to seven human souls flows through him. Once again, a being of great magical power shows his strength through the combining of important colours within Undertale into one. They combine together to make white. It always seems that everything both powerful and magical in Undertale is white. While this could explain a deeper reason behind Toby's decision in making the battles monochromatic, what it doesn't explain is why the backgrounds become black. If there's a logical reason for the monsters to become white, then why do their surroundings become blacked out? We have to consider that black indicates the absence of light and colour. As I suggested, if a magical white aura is what surrounds the monsters, then perhaps this has a darkening effect on the area behind them. Like with Azrael, the colours are merging and becoming prismatic, which may also drain the saturation from their surroundings. You may be wondering, what all of this tells us then? Well, it seems that magic takes on a white hue within Undertale, and there's a pretty logical explanation as to why. The seven human souls within Undertale represent seven traits, and only monsters need all of these to exist. Exist. Humans, on the other hand, do not. When all the colours of the spectrum combine, you simply get white. Therefore, monster souls are white, and presumably because of their good nature, they're able to use magic. Magic, by extension, is also white, and we can reasonably suggest that a prismatic sheen is what surrounds them when they fight you. This is why they appear to be white, and as for the black background, if all the surrounding colour merges to make the monster white, then it's no surprise that there's no light left to illuminate anything else. Therefore, it's left in darkness, explaining why the battles in Undertale take place in black and white. This must be why Mega Flowey appears in colour, because he's a soulless creation fueled by determination rather than magic like other monsters, and so therefore he isn't truly harnessing the power of magic. Additionally, the colour white appears to be an indicator of magical power. Two of the most powerful monsters within the game have white overworld sprites, and perhaps Dreamer Fur lacks any sort of pigment because of their natural inclination towards powerful magic. It certainly doesn't make sense that they would have evolved that way without living in an icy cold environment. So there you have it. I obviously can't rule out that Toby is just one lazy dog. However, did you ever notice that the annoying dog is also white? We have to keep in mind that within Undertale, that dog is also very powerful. It seems like the lack of colour really does mean something after all. Well, that seemed pretty interesting to me. Colour in Undertale plays a much bigger role than it first seems. The seven traits and the lack of colour during battles testifies to that. It's only natural to deduce that it signifies something important. The idea that white is the colour of magic fits neatly into so many other theories that it just seems like common sense. But then, who knows? Maybe Toby just knew that people would be less likely to forget Undertale if its fights were in black and white. What do you think? Do you agree that there could be a bigger reason? The possibilities are very, very interesting. As always, I hope Hope you enjoyed the video. Try not to get stuck in an endless plane of darkness, and I'll see you next time. Before I go, I'd just like to say a massive thank you to my patrons. My head scientists Asgore and She, Cameron Vihill, Kay Jensen, Sophronius and Mary, and my underlab scientists Crystal Sleet, Nicholas Ducks, Armin Arlet, Marisa Ray, Corey Kidwell, Yushio Karoni, Sarah Wydra, and Emily Gatewood. If you enjoyed this video, please consider checking out the Patreon link below, as well as the video that explains why I'd so massively appreciate your contribution.